This video is for the people who are afraid to make a stick. And steaks, I agree, can be extremely intimidating to prepare. I, for once, wasn't buying steaks whatsoever. I literally had no idea what to do with them. <laughs> once I tried, I burned almost my house down. And then tried to put down the fire on a pan with water. Yeah, it wasn't too bright of an idea. Imagine that. So. I completely understand if you're hesitant to prepare a steak. To tap all that, steaks are also considered a higher calorie protein, considering a chicken, fish, or any, so on any other sort of protein. And if you've seen ever a Gordon Ramsay video, how he prepares a com completely delicious steak, a little bit of oil, yeah, and then a cup of oil goes right in the pan, and then he finishes it with a, just a stick of butter. I bet it tastes delicious. But if I had to make steak like that, I probably would have to save my all day of calories just to eat that one piece of steak. And at the same time, I don't know about you, but I do not like to eat the low calorie, so-called bland food, or sometimes low calorie means, if you see other videos, where just like a tiny portion of it and I need to have at least six ounces of protein in order for me to feel satisfied. The good news is that sometimes just a little tweak can make a whole lot of difference and that's exactly what this video is all about. Depending on the cut of a steak, um, regular steak can have 160 calories per four ounces plus. So let's, for example, take a sirloin, which is, I would say, in the middle, according to the internet, it's uh, about 200 calories per four ounces. So as I mentioned, I need six ounces, that would bring me up to 300 calories per portion. And then, of course, you have other things that you're going to add. So now, the biggest difference is going to be how you're going to cook it. And in this video, I will show you how to cook a steak without adding any extra calories. That means we're not gonna use any oil, any butter, any of that, but still will preserve the flavor and you're absolutely gonna enjoy it. And this type of technique that I'm gonna show you is good for all type of uh, steaks, like about inch to maybe half an inch, up to two inch thickness. I will show you how to make an amazingly tasting steak on a non-stick pan. Yes, non-stick, cheap, crappy pan. And you're gonna see me cooking for you two different types of steaks. One is gonna be inch and a half sirloin, and another one is one of my favorite cuts. It's gonna be flap meat. Some people will compare it to maybe churrasco steak. It's a really inexpensive cut, but in my opinion, absolutely delicious. It has so much flavor, but it's extremely important that you cook it right and cut it right, because that will, I mean, that steak can be very tough if it's not prepared right. So I'll show you those techniques on those two different steaks, and I hope you'll enjoy it. Start with taking the meat out of the fridge at least an hour before you are ready to cook it. This is an inch, maybe inch and a half thick cut of sirloin. Before seasoning it, make sure you pat it dry with a clean paper towel. You do not want any extra moisture on your steak. I like to season it with salt and pepper only. Some people say it is not good to season a steak before cooking it. And I'm not really sure what the difference is, but maybe I do not have very refined taste buds, so I won't argue. And here I have a flap meat. This one is a bit irregular, meaning the same, um, meaning the same piece can be thicker on one side than the other. 
this marbling, all the little fat veins you see, that's all the delicious flavor. Also, this steak looks a bit different on the other side. You can remove the light, thin skin that you see to make the steak a bit more tender. Um, season with salt and pepper. And set it aside as well. And this is my high-end $17 cheap non-stick pan that I will use to demonstrate how easy it can be to cook a steak at home. Make sure it is preheated well before putting the steak on, preheated but not burnt. It is very easy to burn this type of pan, so be careful. Can you hear the sizzle? That is exactly what you want to hear at this stage. This means you, your pan is perfectly preheated and ready for the meat. Pat it dry on the other side as well, just to make sure no moisture is there and season it on the other side. I am using kosher salt, which is less salty, so it may seem a lot, but it is not. Season to your taste. You will cook the steak on medium-high heat for about three minutes per side. Let's take a closer look. See how the fat renders from the steak slowly? And the sides at the bottom of the steak are starting to brown slowly. And the thick side here of the fat is melting away, releasing all the amazing flavors. It looks like it's ready. Let's pick. Almost there. Notice the flame I have here. A few more minutes or a minute. Another peak. Yeah, looks good. Nicely browned, not burnt. I'm going to flip it now to the other side. So, question, how do you know this steak is actually ready? All will depend on the type of doneness you prefer. I cook my steak medium rare, which is very red inside and cooked on the outside. Because I have cooked steak many, many times, I already know just by looking at them and I know that three minutes per side is where I need to pay attention. But the best measurement is to touch it lightly. Can you see how it bounces back a bit? It means it is red inside. The harder the meat is to touch, the more well done it will be. So on the thinner side, it's a little bit harder. And as you can see on the thicker side, it's much much softer and don't worry if you don't get it right the first time with time you will get a hang of it I promise practice makes perfect notice how much fat it got released from the meat that only shows that you do not need any extra fat to cook a steak next step is to rest the meat do not cut it right away as the juices will escape and the steak will be less flavorful. This is a very important step. I can't stress this enough. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes for the steak to rest. It will also cook a bit more while it is resting, I noticed. Not too bad for an inexpensive cut of meat on a cheap non-stick pan. What do you think? I really want to know. Leave a comment below.
For my second type of steak, flap meat, the same goes. Preheated non-stick pan, no oil, no butter, little sizzle. I like to put the steak fatty side down so I can render the fat first. A minute in and the fat is rendering beautifully. I just love watching the whole process, not to mention that the smell is insane. Little shot of the flame so you know what heat you need. three minutes in and you notice how much more fat is released. Do you still think you need extra oil on the pan? Leave a comment below, I wanna know. Time to flip to the other side. Three minutes on this side and a touch test. The thicker side will be much, much more tender than the thin side. If your cut has a very big difference between sides, like mine does, Flip it on the thicker side for a few seconds, just like so. Look at the brownish spots. It looks good to me. Time to rest this baby for 10 to 15 minutes. Mm, not bad at all. Once the meat rested, you are ready to cut it. You can either portion it for individual servings or just slice it. I just want you to, um, I just want to show you how it looks inside. And this is how I like it. Red and rare inside and cooked on the outside. This is a perfection. Enjoy this minute of food porn. are not enjoying it as much as I do you are weird just kidding because you must like the meat cooked well no worries cook the meat longer and test it like I showed you by touching it you will need the meat uh, to be harder to touch and not bouncing back when you lightly pressing on it now to the second meat this one you have to make sure you cut it against the grain sometimes it takes me a while to determine where the grain is but i manage but this one by far is my favorite steak i really like the flavor 
This one and the churrasco uh, cut uh, are just like so, so flavorful. They're perfect for ha fa fajitas. If you've ever been to Mexican restaurant or, or ever had Tex-Mex or maybe you were in Mexico, who knows. Uh, they, this is the type of meat that uh, you're usually gonna get um, for fajitas. Most of the time, at least I like it that way. So here you go, two great and inexpensive cuts of meat cooked to perfection without adding extra calories ready in few minutes i hope this was helpful and you can use these methods to cook your next steak dinner let me know how you like your meat cooked in the comments below watch these two videos next and i will see you on the next one